Welcome to lecture 26 of Biology 116 entitled Immunity. And what I would consider my favorite lecture, what we're going to be focusing on now, is the idea of adaptive immunity. And in order to begin, we'll entitle the first full chart, Intro to Adaptive Immunity. Previously, when we looked at the blood and immunity lecture, what we focused on mainly was innate immunity, the immunity that you're born with. Basically, the first response to some sort of pathogen entry or some sort of disease-like state. What we're going to now focus on is the second response or the more adaptive response. And we'll see what this means as we move forward with this lecture. The number one thing we have to first understand about adaptive immunity, it's all about timing when we think of this type of immunity as compared to innate. Because adaptive immunity actually takes several days to prepare. It's a very, very specific response that takes several days to prepare. And so while those several days of preparation are happening, um, in order to prepare uh, adaptive immunity, so AI for adaptive immunity, these there's going to be something that's allowing the body to still be safe, right? Adaptive immunity is basically going to be considered our specific immunity. It's a very, very specific form of immunity. But you have to ask yourself the question, as these several days are going by of preparation, how do you still stay, stay alive, stay safe? And that's when you use your innate defenses. That's why we went over innate first, and initially in the previous lecture, when we were talking about blood, you use your innate defenses as this is preparing itself, because it takes a little bit of time for this really strong, specific response to get ready. So you use those innate defenses until the adaptive is ready. So until adaptive, and adaptive immunity I mean by this, is ready. So your body has a very nice two sort of double-sided attack in terms of any pathogen that enters or any sickness that you may encounter. There's always going to be an innate defense, and if that defense is going to, it's going to hold off that pathogen as long as it can. It may even destroy the pathogen. Sometimes if it fails, then you utilize adaptive immunity, which was preparing as innate defenses were working. Now, let's look at some details of adaptive immunity, and those details are really going to be all about the cellular level. Specifically, adaptive immunity is going to contain what are known as lymphocytes. These are a specific type of white blood cell that are going to be really, really good at this adaptive immunity concept. Lymphocytes are going to be seen um, in both innate and adaptive immunity, but we're going to see specifically what makes lymphocytes special in adaptive immunity in just a second. So I'll write down that it's in both innate plus adaptive immunity. But what we want to focus on are those lymphocytes, those white blood cells that are found within adaptive immunity specifically. There are two types found in adaptive immunity, so we'll write that down. Two types in the adaptive arm of immunity. And in terms of understanding these two types, we need to first understand where they come from. They both are going to be originating much like any blood cell within the bone marrow. So they're both originating um, as stem cells. So as stem cells, plural, they're part of that pluripotent stem cell arrangement within the bone marrow. So we'll write that down in bone marrow. So we have these really undifferentiated, unspecialized cells within the bone marrow. Some of them, upon development, are going to become lymphocytes of adaptive immunity. And in order to figure out which ones become the lymphocytes of specifically adaptive immunity, of specific immunity, we have to understand that there are going to be two possible different developmental DEV for developmental paths. And these two different developmental paths are based off of the fact that there are two types of lymphocytes within adaptive immunity. Those two developmental paths are as follows. Some of the lymphocytes that are going to be a part of adaptive immunity, they're going to remain, they're going to stay and complete their development in the bone marrow. So they're going to remain in bone marrow to develop. These cells that stay within the bone marrow to develop and become fully uh, mature lymphocytes that are successfully a part of adaptive immunity, these are going to be known as B cells. 
And it's very easy to remember this because B for B cells means that they matured and developed completely within the bone marrow. Now, if we look at the other side of this, the other developmental path, some of these original cells that were within the bone marrow, because all of our white blood cells come from the bone marrow, some of them are going to start there and then migrate to somewhere else. Some are going to migrate, that means move to a different part of the body, specifically known as the thymus. Some migrate to thymus to complete development. So they may begin in the same orientation as the, ble as the B cells, but they're going to complete their development somewhere else in the body, no longer in the bone marrow. These are then appropriately referred to as T cells. Thus the name T for thymus. That's where we complete the development. Don't get me wrong, they both start in the bone marrow, but in terms of how we name them, we're basing it off of where do they complete development. The B cells stay in the bone marrow and complete development there. The T cells leave the bone marrow and migrate to the thymus to complete their development. Thus the name T cells versus B cells. So those are the two major types of cells within adaptive immunity that will be a part of our specific response against a pathogen. In addition, in adaptive immunity, a big term to understand, and we're going to be utilizing this term a lot throughout this lecture, is known as an antigen. Antigen will be abbreviated as AG from this point forward. We're going to define an antigen as any foreign substance, something that's not within the body originally, something foreign, any foreign substance that triggers, that causes, that elicits a B or T cell response. So a specific response in other words, or in other words, an adaptive response. Anytime you have a B or a T cell response, that just means you're triggering the adaptive immunity. You're triggering specific immunity. Now, in terms of actually what an antigen is, structurally speaking, we can state that most antigens are going to just be a little bit like a, a protein molecule. They're going to resemble a protein. They will be a protein molecule or sometimes even a large, uh, very distinguishable polysaccharide type of structure. And it's this is the key part here. It's usually always going to be on the surface of the invading cell. So they're usually these surface structures on the invading cell, on the surface of cell. And we're specifically talking about a foreign cell right now, thus a foreign protein or a foreign large polysaccharide that classifies itself, therefore, in adaptive immunity as an antigen, something that will cause B and T cells to respond. These are going to be found, antigens, that is, on pathogens. Pathogens are just anything that triggers an immune response, anything that causes disease possibly. But also, antigens may be found, and they are found, on our own blood cells, and they're also found on our own tissue cells. Now, you might be wondering, how could you have something that's uh, a foreign substance on your own blood cells or your own tissue cells? Well, what this really means, these two are specifically referring to the idea of transplants. Sometimes transplants fail, and that's because you don't have the correct match of blood type or the correct match of immune antigen type when you distribute or transplant tissues. Therefore, when you get a foreign person, somebody else's blood or somebody else's tissue, let's say somebody else's heart, you may have a very bad immune reaction to that. Why is that? Well, that's because it's a foreign substance. It's somebody else's blood. It's somebody else's tissue that's being put into you and causing your B and T cells to say, oh, this is weird. This is not self. So we have to attack. So blood cells and tissue cells, they also may have specific antigens that specify where they come from. Same thing with the pathogen. The pathogen is what we're going to be focusing on throughout this lecture. What happens when a foreign pathogen enters the body, it evades or defeats the innate defenses, how can we still defeat this pathogen? We're going to utilize this antigen relationship um, in a very, very specific way. In addition, to be even more specific than just saying antigen, another good term to understand about adaptive immunity is known as the epitope. Epitope is going to be defined as the specific, that's the key word throughout this lecture, the specific exposed region. So this is a very visible exposed region on the surface of the antigen molecule. So this is now even more specific than just saying antigen because this is a specific exposed region 
on the antigen molecule, specifically the surface of the antigen molecule. Now, this epitope is going to be important because we're going to classify this as, and here's that word again, the specific part, this is the specific part of the antigen, that foreign substance of the antigen that binds to, this binding will be very important later on, binds to the antigen receptor. There are going to be a lot of these antigen receptors on our own immune cells. This type of specific antigen to immune cell binding will be highlighted as we move forward, but for right now know that it's the epitope, that's the specific part of the antigen that binds to the antigen receptor within immune cells. More on this relationship as we move forward. Finally, last thing about epitope is the fact that each B and T cell, okay, all of them are going to be, have their own, let's say, specificity. Each B and T cell with specificity for a specific epitope. So now, remember how we said in innate immunity, there was this idea of having let's say, uh, a general set of recognizable structures or proteins, whatever it may be within innate immunity, there's a set of things that innate immunity was able to figure out, like bacteria versus fungi. Right now, this specificity that each B and T cell has, it basically means that each B and T cell, whenever they're developed and fully ready to attack or defend, whatever it may be, they're going to be specifically looking for a specific epitope on a specific bacteria now. Let's say E. coli. That could be the specific bacteria. And there are tons of different E. coli strains, and there's a specific part of E. coli that one B and T cell can recognize. This specificity shows you the idea that there's going to be an incredible amount of recognition throughout innate immunity or throughout adaptive immunity that again, and I hope this is very, very clear, that this is all very, very specific between the B and T cell. Now, in order to understand the specificity, we're going to move forward and continue our discussion on adaptive immunity by now looking specifically at B cells and T cells and how they recognize things. How are they capable of maintaining and establishing such great amount of specificity in their function?